Hello, can you hear me? Good afternoon. Uh, something about some rating. Keep that in mind afterwards. Uh, I'm gonna talk about artificial in, uh, intelligence and a special version of it called the general intelligence. Uh, it's not because I'm crazy. Um, it's, not, it's really because it's not about AGI itself. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey there, all the technologies and the techniques that we're gonna develop to get there. Those things are gonna be very interesting and they are gonna be applicable. As you can see from my background, uh, I, I come out of uh, the practical use of machine learning. Uh, uh, I built uh, the Michelangelo uh, platform at, at Uber, which is the, the company-wide uh, machine learning platform. I was GM for machine learning at Amazon and ran uh, the internal Elastic machine learning service. Uh, I also launched Amazon Machine Learning, the first uh, machine learning service on AWS. Um, Microsoft, autonomous agents at IBM, research. Um, so having done all that, uh, I moved to, a couple of years ago, moved to Unity, a gaming platform company, uh, uh, AR, VR, gaming, automotive, film, uh, about 60% of all uh, games in the world are written on the platform. Uh, we are installed on over 4 billion devices um, and uh, have a lot of active players every month and 2,400 employees. Yeah. So uh, a pretty big deal. Uh, in gaming, particular, uh, but you may wonder why the shift for me, and that's some of the stuff I'm gonna show you today, why I think it's important coming with a strong enterprise background. Uh, you know, gaming actually brings something to the table that uh, is really, really beneficial. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's first briefly talk about uh, AI and a definition of it. Uh, I spent eight years on virtual, voice-enabled virtual assistants. I can tell you, Siri and Alexa is not AI. It's software engineering, like thousands of engineers, script writers, creative writers, audio, uh, voice talent, uh, all that stuff, yeah? There's probably a little machine learning here and there, but it's not AI, yeah? Uh, Netflix and Amazon recommendations, smart engineers writing very smart algorithms that uh, get you to watch uh, Netflix uh, home-produced shows, no matter how much you really want to see something else, yeah? Um, fraud detection services, uh, equity trading, uh, trading algorithms, yeah? Really, really uh, some brilliant mathematician creating some trading algorithms that trade stock and make someone else rich, yeah? Uh, Facebook feed, not AI at all. Uh, and probably one of the most successful AIs in the world is all the self-proclaimed AI specialists uh, on LinkedIn, but that's a different story. So what is intelligence? Uh, that's the dictionary definition. But what is the only real intelligence we know? That, that's not abstract, yeah? It's the intelligence that we see in biological systems, yeah? It's basically sensors and nature's algorithms combined that basically does five things, yeah? Number one, it enables uh, living beings to consume energy because you know about entropy, tries to kill kind of structure, yeah? So we need to consume energy, we need to eat while not getting eaten ourselves, that's it, yeah? Uh, we also have to become more abundant because we don't live forever, so there needs to be someone taking over. And we have to be aware of physics because we can Fall, uh, fall down from the apple tree when we try to get an apple or fall over an edge or something or get hit by a boulder or what do I know, physics, scary. And, and lastly, the fifth principle in nature is agency, that is uh, our, our ability to impact our environment to uh, improve our probability of survival, yeah? So those five principles are really what's behind intelligence because nature created infrastructure to achieve that, yeah? So it created things like chemical mechanisms, cellular structures, multicellular structures, yeah? So it's not good enough to have bacteria themselves, but we put them together and we create uh, systems, uh, skeletons with mus mus muscles, uh, what do I know, yeah? So 
all of these things happen through evolution to address this need for intelligence for living beings to survive. Yeah. So that brings us straight in a magic leap to game engines. Yeah. If you think about it, yeah, in a game engine, you have a 3D environment, you have a spatial environment, yeah? you have a physics engine with gravity, simulated gravity, you have collision, you have inertia, and you have a somewhat closed environment where you can create action in. Yeah? So if I want to root my AI in nature, this is a scalable way of doing it. Yeah. So therefore, at uh, Unity, we created something called uh, the ML Agents Toolkit, which is basically a plug-in to the Unity game engine that allows anyone to actually play with this stuff at scale uh, and mimic a lot of uh, what we know from nature. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, we're not the first ones realizing that game engines are, are fun to play with if you're an AI researcher, yeah, or constructive, not just fun, but constructive to play with, or productive, yeah. Uh, there's been uh, bots developed for playing visual games, uh, there's been uh, AI developed for, for learning humanoids uh, uh, to walk, and uh, there have been uh, AI doing cognitive, you know, chess and Go uh, playing, yeah. So those, those are part of our history. Uh, but what we are seeing with the Unity ecosystem is that because it's a gaming ecosystem, you have, you have all the physics, yeah? You have all the graphics, high fidelity graphics, you have all the 3D uh, challenges, and you have also cognitive challenges. You have everything in gaming, yeah? Everything, yeah? So that's why game engines are so crucial for developing artificial intelligence, yeah? Here's a quote from Demis Hazabis from DeepMind. You heard about DeepMind with AlphaGo and all the work they have done there. Yeah? Uh, it's actually funny to think about. The DeepMind company mission is to create AGI. Yeah? Okay. Uh, we, we work closely with them. They use uh, Unity everywhere uh, in their research. Uh, and uh, it just exemplifies how you can simulate nature and Test out your and to test out and develop your AI algorithms that way. Yeah. I want to talk a bit about nature's uh, learning method. Yeah. So this is underlying everything I show here. Everything I show you today, it's done by computers, not by people. Yeah. We give it a learning algorithm. We give it a problem, and then uh, uh, the system will observe. It will take action, and it will uh, take the rewards and penalties from what it did. Yeah. Uh, this is called reinforcement learning. It goes from exploration when it knows nothing, is trying to figure things out, to, explore, uh, to exploitation when they actually figure it all out, yeah? Just, just, like, just like an Amazon web page, yeah, where they try to sell you stuff, and over time they, they figure out what to sell you and what not to sell you, yeah? It's the same thing. It's actually the most used algorithm uh, at Amazon is a version of this called multi Bandit. Yeah. So I'm going to show you a little video. This is a computer that sees frames of a game just like you. The game here is to get the chicken to cross the road, not getting killed by cars, and g picking up uh, gift packages on the way. Yeah? Uh, so computer looks at pixels just like you. So no, no deep integration here, just the visual integration. It has four actions, whatever they are. It doesn't really know, but it has four actions and a reward signal coming back every time the chicken gets hit by a car, it's a negative, and picks up a gift package as a positive. And here's what it looks like. Uh, learning from scratch, also called tabula rasa. So no software engineers are cheating here. Look, the chicken moves more backwards than forwards, yeah? But in a moment, it will pick up the gift package right there in front of it, and boom, and then bang. Got killed by a car, yeah? 10 seconds of what? Two bits of information, yeah? Cars are bad, packages are good. After half an hour of trial and error, it gets pretty good, yeah? You see a pattern, it, uh, it will pick up gift packages, it will avoid cars, not always, but to, to a good extent, yeah? Remember that everything is randomized, it's non-deterministic, yeah? So the cars and the gift packages are constantly distributed. Now watch after six hours. Moving from scratch, yeah. 
No cheating. It just figures it all out, yeah? Look, look some of the patterns where it will stop, where it will move from side to side, try to navigate these vehicles coming in. And the vehicles are random, yeah? So it's not like it learned some p fixed pattern, yeah? It just learns. It's it actually seen in those six hours, it's seen enough to see it all. Yeah. I'm going to show you some, some other scenarios. Everything done here using the same group of algorithms, uh, no cheating, no hand coding, no rules-based systems, none of that, yeah? Uh, here's a quadruped. Remember all the, the, the joints here that can move, yeah? So I'm basically just saying move randomly until you figure out how to move from left to right, yeah? So there's a lot of coordination going on here, learning how to, to move four legs so that you actually move forward, yeah? Anyone ever had a, a small child, like 9, 10, 11 months old, when they first time they need to stand up, yeah? It's hard, yeah? Apparently it's hard for the computer to learn too, yeah? yeah? A lot of little muscles that need to, to do stuff there to keep the balance, yeah? Or learn to walk, yeah? <laughs> yeah? So this is just like the chicken, yeah? So I'm not telling it. You have to move one leg in front of the other and do this. It's like, do whatever you want with these mechanics, with this geometry, figure out how to move forward. Apparently, we figured it out to do the same as the computer did, yeah. yeah. Other things here that is so inspiring, which is we play with stupid computers and we see patterns over and over that, that are like, I've seen this before, like this one, yeah. You have a very, very hard problem to solve. You need to scale a wall. When the wall gets too, too tall, you need to actually, the blue agent needs to push the orange cube next to the wall as a stepping stone to get over, yeah? Okay? So rather than just use brute force, let the computer figure it out, yeah? We start easy, yeah? And then we make it incrementally harder. What does that mean here? Yeah, we, we start with the wall being like, not there at all, and then we move, move up the wall, make it higher and higher and higher, yeah? Every time the agent gets really good at scaling the wall, we make it higher, we make it graduate, yeah? It looks graphically like this, yeah? The orange line is where we just use brute force. Just let the computer figure it out, we won't do anything, yeah? Takes a long time, never gets really good at it. The blue line is, the, is curriculum learning, yeah? You graduate, every time you get a little better, you graduate and you, 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 you get a new challenge, yeah? Learns much faster, becomes much better at it, yeah? Just like animals, just like humans, we don't go to high school straight away, we go through the hoops in elementary school first, yeah? In this case here, give it a, just a little thought, look at the agent, use the, 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 the orange cube to help it over, uh, watch in this one here. If the wall is not that tall, I'm just going to scale it myself. I don't need the tool. What's interesting here is that the system actually learns to use a tool to solve a problem. Yeah. It's non-trivial physically to push the cube next to the wall to scale the wall. Learns that from scratch. Yeah. We also have things like memory. Uh, we use long short-term memory. It's, a, it's a LSTM. It's a method. Um, in this case here, we have the agent enter room, and if the, if the cube is, is orange, it needs to take the orange exit. If it's red, it needs to take the red exit. Yeah? The only thing we tell the system is when it's wrong or right. Yeah? It says, no, wrong exit or right exit. Yeah? Okay? Looks like this. It comes in, sees it, learns over time that if the cube is orange, better use the orange exit or I get punished. Yeah? The interesting thing here is that we never told it it's the color that matters, yeah? We just say yay or nay, over and over and over, and it figures out that color matters. Not size, not location, not uh, uh, the time of the computer or whatever, yeah? The color, yeah? A small example that it even learns to sort of understand its problem, yeah? I'm gonna show you another one here. It's it's the quadruped again, yeah? But this time, two machine learning models. One of them is the one that walk, 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 walk. The other one is the one with the ray cast looking for the target, yeah? So one model is looking and saying, turn, you know, to the left, to the right, to, you know, navigate over there. 
and leaves it to the other machine learning model to figure out how to move those four legs in the right way to get over there, yeah? This is how we, we have hundreds of layers of that in our brains, yeah? Where we basically hand off from one model to another, yeah? Multi-agents, yeah? So we are just using one agent so far. Here we have uh, two agents playing, playing some sort of tennis, yeah? They learn to play. Imagine all the physics they have to learn here. So they have to be able to sort of understand the ballistics, yeah? There are other examples, yeah? Two brains, two machine learning models. Um, in this case here, we have a strike objective. It's a saga example. We have a strike objective, which is to score, and we have a defensive objective, which is, uh, you know, to keep the goal clean, yeah? So we have two agents in there. Uh, and uh, they have raycast, meaning they have a single eye and they can see what's going on in, in front of them. And in this case, we basically train the, the striker to hit the goal initially, just like with the chicken. Yeah, initially, it will, not, they will, it will not be very good at it, but it will figure out over, you know, after half an hour, whatever, how to score, yeah? We have a defensive player, which is, you know, prevent scoring. Again, half an hour of training and they will figure it out, yeah? Then we'll put them together, play against each other. Now they can train each other, yeah? And they will train each other to be better and better, better at scoring and better at defending until they converge and they don't improve any longer. And at that point, I stop and I basically copy the models and create two teams. And it looks like this. Yeah. What's interesting is that a defensive player becomes a goalie, clearly. We stand in front of the goal, and that's apparently a good idea to prevent scoring. I never, again, I was not the engineer here saying, oh, you should be a goalie and you can't move outside the, you know, away from the goal, yeah? They just learned that. Apparently, defensive player preventing scoring becomes, you know, what we recognize as a goalie. And the strikers, what do they do? Well, they run up. Why do you, do you notice they run sideways? Why do they run sideways? Because when I'm sideways, I can see the entire field. I'm sideways up along the line. Yeah? Isn't that what we yell at the kids when they, those of you kids who play soccer, we always say, up along the line, yeah? It's much easier along the line because there's nobody coming from the, except the parents out there, yeah? Yeah. More soccer. Soccer is very interesting. Actually, uh, Deep Mind and a few others, they took our examples and elaborated on them. Saga is, is awesome to play with uh, when we look about these things. Here we have um, one or more agents. Uh, blue agents, they are free to move around. Uh, they turn red for two seconds when they kick the ball. So that's the, the cost function, yeah? You kick the ball, you freeze for two seconds, yeah? So there's a, there's a cost. It's not free to kick the ball because you, you get frozen for two seconds, yeah? Okay? So let's, let's look at individual rewards versus uh, collective rewards. So in, 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 in this example, uh, each agent is trying to win. Yeah. So what happens? Yeah. So what happens is that nobody really wants to kick the ball because someone else may just take it and then they may score. Yeah. Yeah. So they are cherry picking up in front of the goal, but they are, nobody wants to kick, yeah? This is look almost like a, a, a team when I was at Microsoft, yeah? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So individual rewards obviously don't work if you want to create a team, yeah? Uh, imagine the computer teaches us that, yeah. So let's take another example here. Uh, we make it hard. We tilt the whole field, yeah, to create a difficult situation for the agent. Kicks the ball, it freezes up, the ball runs behind it, it needs to, yeah, yeah. Okay, so clearly when you are a single agent, you can't solve this problem, yeah, so you have to be a team, yeah, okay? This is what a real team looks like. The award here, uh, or the rewards function here is for the team, okay? Not for the agent. And look how they, they work nicely together. Uh, uh, to, to achieve the objective, yeah. So again, think about this. This is just trial and error like the checking, yeah. These guys are just trying over and over until they figure it out, and you see some patterns, and they're like, 
interesting. We call that emergent behavior. Yeah. Let's talk a bit about traits. Um, we have a lot of extrinsic traits in machine learning, yeah? This is what we learn when we work at Uber or Amazon, all these places, or play games, yeah? It's capture, achieve, collect. It's basically getting rich, yeah? Yeah? That's, that's how we operate. We have extrinsic rewards. Um, they are specific to the environment, yeah? I mean, like, without a bank account or without a monetary system, it doesn't really matter uh, much to collect money, yeah? Okay? We also have intrinsic rewards. And this is the theme here is think about nature, think about nature, think about uh, um, stuff that happens in nature like intrinsic rewards. Yeah? We know there are things, traits in us and animals like curiosity or impatience and patience, empathy, happiness, love, all these very costly traits are apparently there to help survivability. Yeah? So why not use them in computers as well? Yeah? So they're specific to the agent and they are things like getting happy, whatever that is. Yeah? It's not the bank account, it's something else. Yeah? What we did uh, was to look around for problems that was not easy solved. We call those problem spaces, uh, one example of those is a category of problems that are sparse reward spaces. It's, it's, it's basically a yeah, the Christie problems, you know, if you ever read her books, it's these kind of ridiculous, improbable scenarios. It's like something happened on page one, it's pretty unlikely on page two, something even more unlikely happens after that first unlikely event, and from there on it's just downhill, yeah? It's, it's just improbable, yeah? Um, we created the scenario that is of that nature, yeah? So the agent enters a house full of rooms. In one of those rooms, a push button will appear. It needs to learn all this, yeah? Go and push the push button. A pyramid will appear in another room. On top of the pyramid is a gold bar. Knock over, physically knock over the pyramid and catch the gold bar. That's your extrinsic reward, yeah? But to solve that problem, Randomly, with any other, without any other traits, it's just not going to happen. Um, so what we found was that we basically formulated curiosity. Every science, uh, scientist is a curious person, yeah? yeah. Uh, small uh, squirrels are curious, yeah? When they look behind trees to see if there's an, there's an acorn back there, yeah? They're curious. They're not randomly searching in the big empty space, yeah? We did some math, and the, the key of the math here is that minus lock in there. What it says is that curiosity is the opposite of what we are trying to do in machine learning, and machine learning was trying to minimize the error, yeah? Let's maximize, let's, let's learn to look for the biggest, biggest error we can find. That is curiosity. The thing you cannot predict correctly what, what it will do. So you, let me show you. The agent is now, this is not a curious agent, yeah. This is just random exploration. This is actually how Amazon and Netflix, there's a lot of the exploration in their algorithms is, is just random. They pick random products, show it to you, you like it, you don't like it, yep, yeah. Doesn't achieve much. Here you see curiosity, but no extrinsic values, just curiosity, yeah. See how, how systematic it goes from room to room? tries to find something it doesn't know anything about, it hit the pyramid, it sees that the pyramid is, is moving, the, the bricks are moving if I, if I push them, so it starts you know, exploring that and say, what, what does that mean? I've never seen this before. Look, it doesn't explore the walls, it doesn't explore the floor because it has seen it before, there's nothing new there. Yeah? Now let's combine curiosity with the desire to get rich, and it looks like this. Yeah? It goes systematically from room to room in search for the push button, pushes it, looks for the pyramid, knocks down the, the pyramid, uh, and there, got the gold bar. Next, okay. I can tell you that using random exploration, 10, 20 million attempts, and it won't really learn it. Maybe once in a while it will learn it, but in general not. You add curiosity to it, between 10 to to 20,000 uh, attempts, it figures it all out. The whole chain of events. That's 
actual breakthrough. Yeah. Um, I want to show you another example, Popo, uh, a virtual robot. Um, it's basically uh, a virtual robot that just like the chicken, just like everything I showed you, from scratch, without any animators from Disney or Unity or anywhere else trying to help it, needs to figure out how to use the four legs and uh, has to learn to walk, run, jump, turn, whatever, yeah? In a spatial environment with gravity, uh, reinforcement learning, and the reward function, return the stick. That's the only thing I tell it. That's the, the only thing that the software engineer is allowed to put in there, return the stick. What does that look like? We put it in training camp. Let's have hundreds or thousands of puppos learning, and they are not good at it, as you notice, yeah? They have to figure all this out. Yeah, they got it, and then, you know, we immediately, when it gets it, we throw it back and put it in a new random place, and it has to start all over, yeah? I don't know, a million episodes later, it looks like this. I throw the stick with the mouse, yeah? So this is a small demo, I throw it, Papa will chase down the stick, uh, catch it. Uh, you see, life is hard for Papa's. The, the magic here is to stop training while they're still Papa's. Uh, now watch this one. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of fun, yeah. No, no software engineer developed this. This is actually, <laughs> this is a, a, a freaking small piece of magic. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't cheat. Yeah. So just. This is, just, this is just what a dog will do, apparently, uh, or a dog-like thing will do with four legs and the mouth to grab a stick, yeah? Um, you can put it on a phone, too. I actually did a demo on the phone one day for, at, a, at an exhibition, uh, and I was gonna, gonna play a bit with the dog, see if I could get the dog to flip over or whatever, so I'm moving the stick left and right. Yeah? You know what happened? Think about the rewards function, yeah? So I move the stick left, right, left, right. You just grab the stick, turn around, and drops it. I'm like, hmm, I tried that before, too. That's what dogs do, yeah? So it's interesting how these very simple rewards functions, very simple rewards functions, yeah? Let loose in a, in a, in a physical, uh, in, in, a, in a physics environment, uh, start coming up with behavior that we have seen before, yeah? Here we see the dog chasing the bones, on a track field. And uh, what's interesting here, you have to be aware, normally you do swarm behavior when you build games. Yeah? You, you basically have mathematical functions that model swarms. Yeah? In this case here, it's literally 10 machine learning models competing for space, or 50. Yeah? And look at, look at the poor guys out on, 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 on the right side. Yeah? They get pushed over by the guys from the inside because of, you know, because of physics, yeah. And the guys on the grass, cheating, because they're just cutting over, because that's the shortest path to the bones, yeah. 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 So this is, uh, this is actually true flock behavior, yeah, where you actually have parallel systems uh, chasing, yeah. Uh, ML agents have actually become the number one used uh, um, environment uh, for this kind of research. Uh, it's all uh, open source. Uh, everything I showed you is there. Uh, here's a link for anyone who wants to play with it. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it has a, a C-sharp plugin for Unity, everything in Unity is C-sharp. Then it has a Python component to hook it up to your favorite machine learning system. Uh, and uh, I want to show you this, too. So. This has been the standard for a lot of these game explorations, taking existing 2D games. We spent a year developing a computer game, a video game, just built for computers, yeah? not for people to play. Uh, and um, it's a tower. There's 100 floors in there. They're non-deterministic and procedurally generated. And uh, a computer needs to learn to get from floor to floor, and it gets harder and harder uh, to get up there. The competition is a two rounds. The first round actually finishes tonight by midnight. 
uh, you can hurry home. Um, um, uh, but um, the idea here is to really, really challenge systems, yeah? The, the leader of first round got to floor 16. Uh, humans have played to level 22. I can't get to level 16, so I'm beaten by a computer already. Uh, it's very complex. They have to solve a lot of problems in there. You saw there's everything from shadows and lights to things moving around and platforms, and there's like so much going on. It's actually really, really hard for a computer to play this. The point is that I'm already beaten by one, and we're not even finished, yeah. So there's a, a link for that, too, if you want to study it. Um, let's, uh, oh yeah, forgot that. A couple of papers, anyone interested? There's a couple of publications describing some of this stuff. Um, let me get back to the road to artificial general intelligence. But here's the point, think about curiosity, yeah? Think about, I, this is actually one company I'm aware of, because they talked to me, implementing curiosity in their product recommendation, yeah? And the point is that instead of, uh, what, what does Amazon have, 300 plus million customers, over one billion SKUs in the catalog, yeah? Yeah, one billion SKUs. So instead of just grabbing random products and put them in front of you and try you to get you to buy them, they should use curiosity to figure out which product do they know the least about when it comes to you, and just keep exploring you, yeah? That would be interesting, yeah? There's a lot of stuff that nature has done that is really interesting, like attention, yeah? We don't, you know, we don't necessarily see, you know, we have eyes that look in, in certain directions and they focus on stuff. That's to save energy. Uh, memory, uh, I showed you an example of that. There's a lot of stuff that nature essentially has already developed for us that we just need to look over the shoulder of nature and steal, and copy, and, uh, and we'll be fine, yeah. There's also something else. There's a different timeline for humans, yeah, and human culture and behavior, yeah. Uh, Homo sapiens is uh, two to 300,000 years old. It's not very old. I mean, like, the first photosensitive, the first eye, the first mechanical eye with a lens and everything is like 450 million years old, yeah? <laughs> That's a long time, half a billion years, yeah? Humans, Homo sapiens, only two to 300,000 years old, so it's nothing, yeah? Uh, there was an attempt to migrate out of Africa 100,000 years ago. That failed, actually, and we had to wait another, you know, 30, 40,000 years to figure out how to get out of Africa, and then migration happened and went all the way to Australia. Yeah. We also know that there was a cognitive revolution happening around 30 to 70,000 years ago. The figure out there is a human body with a lion head, yeah? That's crazy stuff, yeah? It's 32,000 years old, yeah? So the person who did this had imagination, yeah? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't it wasn't a monkey doing it, yeah? It was someone who had some thoughts, yeah? Um, but here's the, the really important thing I want to leave you with, which is that there was no Moore's law for humans, yeah? For about at least 100,000 years, yeah? There's been no changes to our brain. Yeah? The DNA has not changed, yeah? The processor has not doubled up here every 18 months. It has not moved at all, yeah? Yet, in that same period of time, yeah, something happened that where we went from bay pickers in the forest to put a person on the moon, yeah? And what was that? Well, that was emergence, language, collaboration, anticipation, and the ability to start reasoning about things around us, yeah? That, that's what changed, yeah? So I showed you all these little agents today running on NVIDIA GPUs and all that stuff, and any every, time, every time a researcher comes to me or one of our developers says, I need, I need a faster GPU to do this. No, not, not, not that much more any longer, yeah? Just need more of them, yeah? And you need to put them together. And you need to move from single agent scenarios to having a thousand agents learn to solve a problem. 
because that's what we did. Yeah? So we learned emergence, language, collaboration, anticipation. We learned those things and got really good at it. Yeah? And we're getting better and better and better at working together and building stuff. Yeah? So we just need now to have all these computers that are very incapable, each of them, to learn to work together in their ways to solve problems. That was all I had to say. Uh, thank you.